Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will be discussing about the last problem of today's weekly contest. Build a matrix with conditions. The problem states that you are given an, a positive integer k and two arrays. Uh, first array is row condition, second array is column conditions. First, each of these array would contain uh, a pair, like each of the element of this array would contain a pair. So the first first array row conditions will contain a pair above i comma below i, which means that this integer above i should occur above this integer below i. Similarly, for the second array column conditions, it also contains a pair left i right i. Again, it denotes that this integer left i should come to the left of this integer right i. Okay, so you have to create a k cross k matrix such that each integer from 1 to k occur exactly once in this particular matrix and all other cell would be like would have value 0 and uh, you can return any matrix of such uh, which satisfy all these conditions. Okay, so for example let's say this are the two conditions row conditions and column conditions now this is one possible matrix so why this is correct because the first column uh, first row condition says that one should occur above two so here you can see one actually occurs above two right similarly this states that three should occur above two so three has occurred above two similarly for this condition two occurs to the left of one so we can see two occurs to the left of one and similarly this condition is also satisfied because three is in the left of two so this matrix satisfy all this condition and hence is one possible matrix of this uh, which satisfy all this criteria and this can be one of the answers so basically you have to return one such possible matrix and if answer doesn't exist you have to return an empty matrix so now how to solve this you can see there are like some restrictions here right so whenever there is some restrictions uh, like basically we, we should actually try to uh, formulate it as a graph so we have seen similar type of problems in the past as well so let's say there, these are the two conditions that we have just seen right uh, 1, 2 and 3, 2, which actually states that uh, 1 should occur before, like above 2 and similarly 3 should occur uh, above 2. And for the column conditions, we have these two conditions. Uh, 2 occurs left of 1 uh, and 3 occurs to the left of 2. Now, we can just formulate this in a form of graph so we can form let's just focus on row conditions first so we have these two criteria 1 2 3 2 so let's just formulate it in a form of graph so we have a criteria that 1 should occur above 2 it means that 2 should not occur until 1 has occurred right if, if we go from top to bottom then we have a condition that 1 should not uh, like 1 should the like 2 should not occur until 1 has occurred so let's uh, make an arrow from 1 to 2 which states that for 2 to occur 1 should already have been occurred similarly for second condition it says that 3 should occur above 2 so again 3 should come before 2 let's make an arrow from 3 to 2 which states that until 3 has occurred 2 can't occur now you have a graph right and you have to like linearize this graph basically you have to form you have to come up with a valid uh, arrangement for one two three from top to down right so what like this is a graph and with with some uh, uh, edges and this edges denote that one should occur before 2 to occur similarly 3 should occur before 2 to occur so in a way this is a directed graph and we need to we need to form a we need to linearize this graph such that these edges will still be satisfied so this is nothing but topological sort right basically what we have given some conditions and we have we have been said to linearize this uh, graph 
with one possible value so we can see uh, for this graph one possible arrangement could be 1 3 and 2 similarly because like what this edge says that one should come before two so if you can see this condition is satisfied one actually come before two similarly this states that three should come before two so this again is satisfied now another possible arrangement could be three one two again you can see both the conditions are satisfied in this uh, case as well so basically you can just form the graph do the topological sort how to do topological sort if you are not aware we will come to that we will give a brief description but for now uh, form the array do topological sort and that's it similarly for column condition you can form same kind of criteria but just for left to right so in a way what you're saying is uh, if you go from left to right two should occur before one should occur similarly three should occur before two like before two to occur so in a way we form again a graph where we say that okay for two to occur three should have already been occurred similarly for one to occur two should already have been occurred so a edge from two to one denotes that for one to occur like one can't appear unless two has appeared uh, again this is from uh, this is from left to right now do the topological sort so topological sort should be one there is only one possible ordering which is three two and one right uh, here you can see three occur before two and similarly one occur after two or two occur uh, two occur to the left of one so this is one possible ordering and this is the only ordering for this case now after finding out one possible ordering we just need to fill the matrix so now before going there let's just quickly discuss this topological sort algorithm uh, i am giving a brief if you want a more detailed video you can just uh, watch uh, any other tutorial or online that explains what topological sort is it is fairly straightforward algorithm so in a way the intuition for topological sort is what you want you want all the like all the things that doesn't have an incoming edge are free to occur so here one and three doesn't have an incoming edge so in a way three and one are free to occur anytime so you can either start from three or you can start from one it doesn't matter both are free to occur so we like we start let's say you start with three you pick up three now three has already occurred so if three has already occurred this edge is already satisfied right if three has already occurred it means that three occurred but two hasn't occurred yet so it means this edge is already satisfied so you can remove this edge now again from 2 and 1 there is still an incoming edge to 2 that means 2 still has a restriction but 1 doesn't have a restriction so after 3 let's say you pick up 1 now once you pick up 1 this condition is satisfied so you can remove this why is it satisfied because 1 has occurred before 2 has occurred so this condition is already satisfied so you can remove this edge now once you remove this edge 2 is free to occur right because 2 doesn't have now any dependency so 2 can occur so that is one possible order 312 similarly if you remember at the start we have chosen 3 but if you have started with 1 you will end up with this configuration so that's the core idea behind topological sort in a way you are just starting like you are just uh, starting from the node which doesn't have any restriction and once you put that node in your array you have satisfied some of the restrictions and you can remove the edges that leads to like you, have, you can relax some of the restrictions after putting this node into your answer so hope this makes sense so you can just implement this uh, topological sort uh, using some kind of bfs algorithm initially you can see one and three both are free to choose so you can just push one and three to your queue and then you once you pop you will remove one dependencies and as and when you introduce a new node which doesn't have any dependency you can push that to your uh, queue as well and finally your like whatever order you will visit the queue that will be one of the possible ordering of your topological sort so once you make the topological sorting what exactly remains so let's say uh, for top to down we have cho we, we choose 312 
right? So there are two possible ordering, but let's say we choose three, one, two. Similarly, for left to right, we choose three, two, one. Now, to satisfy this condition, what you can simply do, like the one of the simplest thing that you can do is just put uh, uh, these value in the corresponding intersections. So this is one possible ordering. So basically what you are saying is three should come before two and two should come uh, before one. So in a way, this is the ordering that it should occur. So three should occur somewhere here, two should occur somewhere here and one should occur somewhere here. Similarly, here we are saying that three should occur somewhere here. So this says that three should occur somewhere here. And this says that three should occur somewhere here. So what is the intersection? This is the intersection point, right? So three should occur here. Right. Similarly, if you try for other thing, it says that two occur, two should occur somewhere here. Now this says that two should occur somewhere here. So the intersection point is this one. So two should occur here. So hope you get the uh, sense. So what we are doing just to reiterate from this uh, restrictions array, uh, we form a graph. We do the topological sort uh, once for top to down, second from left to right. Once we have topological sorting, we just uh, uh, found the intersection and that is our answer. So let's just quickly look at the code. The code is simple. Like I have uh, hidden the code of topological sort. We will look at it afterwards. But for now, uh, we are creating a graph for the first condition, row condition. Uh, this minus one is just to make sure that we have K nodes. So because uh, if you look at this above, it starts from one, but the array starts from zero so that this, this is what minus one is like you this is minor implementation details you can ignore this as well uh, similarly i prepared the graph for row condition and each time i uh, i call topological sort to sort like to give a proper ordering for top to down and from left to right now once we have these two ordering uh, remember we have a we have in the uh, question that a matter like there may not be any answer right so when there will not be any answer where if you are not able to come up with a valid topological sort ordering so let's say there is a uh, edge like uh, this as well so let's there's a for there's a edge like this in this graph so now you you can see you can't come up with a topological sort ordering so that's where what, what we are checking is before for before proceeding further, we are checking whether there is a topological sort, valid topological sort ordering of top to down, and there is a valid topological sort ordering from left to right. If any of these doesn't exist, we just run an empty array. Uh, now, if both of them exist, like we have a valid topological sort ordering for left to right and top to down, what we need to do is just find the intersection. So now how to find an intersection? What I am like, there are various possible ways to find this, but what I am doing here, I am uh, iterating from top to down. Now, currently I'm looking at three. So what I will look at, I will find out what is the position of three in this array because position is zero. I will put at zero. Similarly for one, I will find out what is the position of one in this array position is two. So I will put this as two in this uh, uh, in the in the second row, so that's what I am doing. So first, I am finding out the position of each one of them. So position in left to right for this particular element is this. Now then, I tra traverse from top to down, and for each row, for each row j, I am putting the current value at this position. Right? Hope this makes sense. Now once you have done this, you have prepared your array, you can just return the answer. Now let's look at the topological sort as well. So you are given a graph, you have to find out the topological sort ordering. So first, uh, like find out the number of nodes. Now, if you remember, uh, for valid topological sort ordering, one of the ways to implement this is to check whether the in degree of any node is zero or not, right? So that's what we are checking whether, like we are first finding out the in degree of every nodes. Now, once we have found out the in degree of every nodes, we are checking whichever node have in degree as zero. We push that to our queue. Now, until the queue is empty, we are popping one element from the queue and pushing it to the result because that is the that is the case. Like because in degree is zero, it means this node is free to occur. Like J is free to occur. So 
now result would be free to occur and once you have like because you have because current has already occurred so in this case let's say a uh, 3 has already occurred and if 3 has already occurred this edge can be removed right because this condition is already satisfied so that's what we are doing if you remove this edge what will happen one in degree of 2 is removed right so that's what i am doing we are removing this current so we are iterating over all the children of current and decrementing their in degrees because one uh, one of the in degrees are already satisfied now if in degree of any children is zero it means this children after removing this in degree is free to occur as well so if it is free to occur we can just push it to our queue so after this entire loop is over we will have a valid topological sort ordering notice that this result would like can have size size of zero or less than less than n why for in this kind of cases we will not push anything to our queue and this result would be of this result will be of size uh, less than n so that's what we are if you remember that's what we are checking in the uh, condition as well that if the topological sort ordering size is not k that means all the nodes can't be sorted in a linear fashion then we will return an empty array so hope this solution makes sense if you have any doubts in this problem please post them in the comment section below i will be happy to answer if you like the video give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already thank you